By 1940, all of the military radar systems had been ground-based. This was partly a consequence of the fact that they needed to generate large amounts of power, and also they needed large antennas. This meant that they were transmitting very long wavelengths, many tens of metres. The next advance was how do you get one of these radar systems onto an aircraft? If you have an antenna larger than about 1.5 metres, you wouldn't be able to fit it onto the aircraft. What it needed was the development of something that could generate small wavelengths, so you didn't need such a large antenna, and lots of power. And in 1940, the British invented the cavity magnetron. This was the first system that actually generated short wavelengths, so about 10 centimetre wavelengths, in a consistent high energy fashion. This allowed them to take radar systems and actually put them into aircraft. As a consequence of that, the first airborne radar systems were born. The H2S system by the British went on bombers and was actually used to map the ground surface through cloud cover and at night. It is one of the unfortunate things about radar remote sensing that we cannot separate ourselves from a history that involves military instrumentation and development, mostly in secret and largely used in the context of wartime.